And they then went on out on their own. Amen. Right. And walked away from God. Right. Hallelujah. Trying to do it without the book. Amen. And now not only, you know, because the Bible's archaic and it's out of date, now they're thinking the same thing about the Constitution of the United States as well. Amen? Yes. It's out of date. The forefathers didn't have to deal with what we have to deal with today. Yeah. Amen? Come on. So little by little, what they're chipping saying? away at the Constitution. Oh, right. It is impossible to govern without God and the Bible. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have your Bible with you this morning, your King James Version, turn with me to Hebrews 13 and 8. I got your lyrics this morning, Brother Dave, for the house of gold. Don't let me forget to give them to you. Oh. Hallelujah. This is something we talked about last Sunday a little bit. And we'll probably talk about it well, today might be the last day. It might not be because it just keeps rolling over and over in my soul. Amen. Hallelujah. And I can only give you what the Lord gives me to give you. Yes, Amen. Sir. Hallelujah. Oh, I can sit there and think, well, and as somebody said before, if this is what the Lord wants or He wouldn't give it to me to give to you. Yes, so sir. I ain't complaining about it. I'm just explaining. You know, I could try to go in the opposite direction, but I wouldn't like it, neither would you. Amen. Hebrews 13 and 8, and in a world where it seems like every thing and everybody changes. Right. Amen? True. You can take mom, for instance, and she can tell you stories that whenever she was a child, it hadn't been that long ago. I mean, it's been a few years, but yeah. But there are things today that she, as a child, they never even dreamed of that would be taking place or that would be happening. or Even the inventions that we have today. Amen? Right. Someone said, I was reading the other day, and they said that they could tell their, their children that they were around when they're before the internet was. And they'll think they're ancient. Amen. Yeah. But it seems like the knowledge has increased and the Bible says that it will. Amen. Amen. It talks about a people that are ever learning, yeah. but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. Amen. And it talks about knowledge increasing and it has. It seems like everything changes. Right. It seems like there's nothing you can count on anymore. Right. Used to be people would think, well, that's a sure thing. Uh -huh. There ain't no way anything's ever going to happen to that. Come on. And it, it, say it's a business, and they think, well, that's that's the best thing going. Nothing's going to happen. Well, they went bankrupt. Man, I never saw that coming. Amen? Right. Because people change, and things change, and circumstances change. Right. Oh, we have a promise out of the Word of God today my, my, that the Lord dropped in my spirit a couple of weeks ago. And listen, if you're... If you've been raising this thing like I have, I'm a church pew kid. Amen? All right. Mama took us to church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, prayer meeting. Every time there was a revival, we were there. Every time the church doors opened, you'd find us in church. Amen? I'd be either sitting on the pew or... I don't remember if I did much laying under the pew or not. I might have a time or two. But most of the time, I was made to sit on the end of the pew and listen to what was going on and listen to the preaching. And right. So I'm a church pew kid. And we cut our teeth on this scripture right here, which is in Hebrews 13 and 8. Heard it quoted, have heard message after message about it. So you would think, after being in this thing for so long, and hearing this for so many years and so many different messages, you would think, well, there's nothing I can glean from that scripture right there. Oh, but that's one of the most precious things about the Word of God today. Amen? Amen. You can read a scripture. Listen, I've been reading this book for... 40 years. Almost. All right. Amen. Amen. And when I, so I, when I was old enough to read, me and Mama was sitting at the kitchen table having Bible study. Amen. Thank reading the, reading the Scripture. Amen. So close to 40 years I've been reading this book. Yeah. So you would think, man, if you've been reading that 40 years, surely you would know everything that's in it. Well, I would if it was an ordinary book. Yeah. Right. Amen. But it ain't. That's this right. thing is alive. Amen. Right. This thing has so many different views, so many different depths, and so many different heights, yeah. heights, and so many different things in it that you will yeah. never ever grasp it all mm -hmm. with your carnal mind. Amen. Yeah. So you would think after reading this thing and after seeing this scripture and hearing so many preachers preach on it, so many people testify. This is one of the most popular testimonies. That you would hear when people would stand up in the old Pentecostal church, you know, and they'd stand there with their handkerchief and they'd thank the Lord for everything He's done for them, amen, how He brought them through, amen, and how they've been, you know, that the Lord's blessed them in so many ways. And you'd hear this. This should be almost a, a given in most testimonies. 
Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And a couple of Tuesdays ago, Brother Mike dropped this scripture in passing. He was talking about it. And he mentioned this, and the Lord let it stick in my crawl, and it's been there ever since. Amen. Yeah. I thought, what a promise as the Holy Spirit quickened this to me. Amen. In a world where everything changes, amen, yeah. we got a president. That's coming up, you know, on his next election. And four years ago, he promised change. Yes, sir. Well, we got it. Amen. Yeah, sure. We got change. Yeah, Amen. Right Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that's about all we got left in our house is change. Amen. Yeah. All the dollars are gone. Amen. Hallelujah. But he promised change, and we got it. Yes, sir. Amen. That's right. In a world that is changing, oh, my goodness, we went from having one of the most conservative presidents that we've ever had in George W. Bush. Amen. He was a conservative. I'm not talking about financially wise. He spent too much money too. Yeah. But as far as the moral issues, yeah. you're going to have to go back a long way. Maybe Ronald Reagan. You're going to have to go back a long way to find a president that was more conservative on the moral, biblical issues of things like homosexuality, stem cell research, abortion, amen, and all those things like that right there. You didn't have no trouble knowing that George Bush prayed because he told you he prayed, amen? You didn't have anything. He didn't cover up no statues of Jesus, amen? He didn't have any trouble putting his hand over his heart and saying the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, amen? He didn't have any trouble saying God, that we're going to stand and we're going to pray that God will help us through this, amen? So we went from having one of the most conservative presidents ever in the history of the United States yeah. To what we got today. Right. So it's changed a little bit. Amen. Yes, sir. And I say that sarcastically. Amen. Yeah. It's changed a whole lot. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. We went from having a president that believed that God put him in that position. Yeah. Amen. To be a leader. Come on. To someone that I don't even know if he believes there is a God or not. That's right, brother. Amen. Well, he might believe there's one. Yeah. But it might be Allah. That's right. Brother. Amen. Come on, preach. Amen. Come on. It ain't the God that I serve. Right. Amen, amen, amen. Come on. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's right. So people change. Amen. Politics change. Right. The stock market changes. Amen. Yes. The housing market changes. One of the I heard them talking about someplace in California. I don't know if it's the whole state or if it's just some cities going bankrupt. Right. Because of the housing market and how that it was booming at one time, and when the bottom fell out of it, now the the I don't know if they're talking about the state or some of the season ways going bankrupt. Right. Amen. Going bankrupt. Right. Things change. Yes, sir. What you thought was a sure thing changes on you. Amen. The person that you thought you could count on right. might change on you. Amen. That's right, brother. How many people know that you got friends that you thought you could count on for all the rest of your life? Yeah. They changed on you. Amen. Something happened. Right. You couldn't count on them no more. Come on. Oh, there's a friend today that's just closer than a brother. Amen. Oh, oh there's a friend today you can count on, Brother Dave. There's a friend today that he'll be there when you got money. Yeah. He'll be there when you don't have money. Amen. Yeah. A lot of friends, if you got money, they'll hang around like fleas on a dog. But when you ain't got no money, they're gone. You can't find them for nothing. When you need help, you can't find them. Amen. Because they change. Oh. People change. Circumstances right. change. Denominations change. Right. Religious views change. Yes, sir. We have some of the major denominations in America today, and I am no fan of denominationalism. All right. Amen. All right. I, 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 we're not a part of one because of it. All right. Amen. We've had opportunities to be a part Come of on. denominations. Yeah. I've had, and I can drop their names. I'm not going yeah. to, but I can drop their names of denominations that wanted us to be... You need to come in with us. You need to be a part of us. You need to be with... But, we, but I can't be. Because of the way the denomination, the bondage of it today. Amen? Right. But we've got major denominations changing right. the things that their faith, or at least their church, was founded upon. Right. Their denomination was founded upon. True. Amen? Denominations approving homosexuality. Amen? Amen. Amen. That, had, that had it written in their bylaws. Yeah. Just their church constitution stated that 
That was something they would not allow. They would not allow homosexual preachers. They would not allow homosexual song leaders. They would not allow same. They would not allow their preachers to perform same-sex marriages. But today it's changing. Come on, brother. Amen. It's changing. True. People are saying there's a new world. You can you you can't think the old way anymore, honey. The old way is the way. Amen. Yeah. God's word is the same. Always has been. Always will be. Yeah. Never will change. We're talking about Jesus this morning. You can count on Him. You can't count on the stock market. You can't count on sometimes your best friend. Amen. But you can count on Jesus this morning. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you, but He'll go with you all the way to the end. You hear people, my goodness, they stand up. You know, like I said, we cut our teeth on this Scripture. Yes, sir. Hearing testimony after testimony after testimony and sermon after sermon. Amen. And how people, and most of the time, the way they would talk about it would be this way. God delivered Daniel. I know He's going to deliver me. Amen. God healed blind Bartimaeus. I know He's going to deliver me. And will that preach, Brother Billy? Oh, yeah, it will. This ain't, that ain't exactly the way the Lord dropped it in my spirit a couple of weeks ago, but that'll preach. You want me to prove it to you? Thank you. I was glad you'd ask me to. The same God that raised Lazarus from the dead is able to raise the dead today. Amen. The same God that shut the mouths of the lions is able to shut the mouths of the lions that you face. The same God that quits the fire for the Hebrew children is the Oh, that same one they looked in and said, hey, we see three men down there, but we see a fourth one with them. Amen. And he looks just like the Son of God. He was the Son of God. He's the same today as he was then. He can quench the fire that you walk through. Yes, sir. He's more than able. Yes, praise God. The same God that split the Red Sea is the same God today. Nice. Amen. The same God that delivered Goliath into the hands of little David is the same God today that will bring down your giants that you face. Amen. The same God that healed blind Bartimaeus, like I said, that has cried out, Son of David, have mercy on me. He's still a healer today. Amen. The same God that filled those boys, those people on the day of Pentecost in the upper room with the Holy Ghost, is still a Holy Ghost filler today. Amen. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and He will not change. Yes. Amen. I told you I'd preach. Amen. He's the same. He's the same. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He's the same. Amen. Seek out the old paths and walk therein. Where you'll find hope and you'll find life and you'll find strength. Amen. The same one that healed the woman with the issue of blood still has healing power today. Matter of fact, he has the only healing power today. Amen. Hallelujah. He's not a physician. He's the physician. Amen. He is the bomb in Gilead today. Brother Wayne's devotion this morning, was, I think the name of it was, is there still a bomb in Gilead? Oh, I have an answer for that question this morning. There is still a bomb in Gilead. He has not changed. Amen. You know what I don't like? I don't like when I go to the store and I see something on the shelf. You know, I go to buy my favorite drink or I go to buy my favorite uh, food or I go to buy my favorite what was it the ice cream yeah. not long ago and on the box my heart dropped because it said new and improved yeah <clears throat> I don't like it when they put new and improved on stuff yeah because it's usually new but it ain't usually improved amen right. it's usually worse than what they, yeah. why do you have to mess with things amen right. that's what they stamped on a lot of Bibles amen that's what it means when it's got NIV on the side of it they're trying to tell you it's new and it's improved and we've made it better you can't make it no better than this amen 1611 King James Version closest thing we got to the original scripts amen right. you can't get it no better than that right. this is the best it gets yeah. been that way for 400 years it's going to stay that way for the rest of time as far as we're on this earth amen as far as the English speaking people this is it. it this is the best you can get Anyone that ever asked me, what Bible do you, what Bible do you uh, recommend? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's it. <laughs> what Bible, what version do you recommend? Yeah. We'll try this. The only Bible there is, yeah. King James yeah. Version, yeah. 1611. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All the rest of that stuff, that's just a lot of watered down. Brother Scrooge said perversions. Amen. Right. So that's the best it gets right here. Right here. Amen. This is the best it gets. You can't improve. The Word of God. Amen? Yeah. You, yeah. I don't want to leave you hanging in suspense. The ice cream still tasted good. <laughs> but most of the time it don't. Yeah, most of the time when man messes with it, they mess it up. Right. Amen? That's, true. That's what's happened with the Word of God. Yes, sir. That's what's happened with the things that they call Bibles out there on the shelves today. Right. Amen? They've messed it up. 
Things change. People change. Politicians change. The government changes. But Jesus never changes. Amen. The same God that Sister Nancy, or was it Brother Tyler? One of them talked about Tuesday night. They both preached. That caused the woman's meal barrel not to waste. Is the same God that will make sure your pantry doesn't go empty today. Right, Amen. That's right. Now listen, when she went to her meal barrel and her, and her cruise of oil, yeah. it might not have been exactly what she wanted. Come on. She's flesh like us. She probably got tired of eating bread. That's right, but she was thankful for what was in there because God was providing, amen, right. keeping them from starving to death. Amen. I can testify today that whenever I was being brought up, we didn't always have what I wanted to eat. Amen. Yeah. There were times that I sat down at the table and I thought, oh me, flitter bread and gravy again. Amen. But you know what? This old fat boy sopped up that gravy with that flitter bread. Amen. Yeah. And I didn't starve to death. Amen. I'm telling you, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. If He has to do it. If your cupboard's empty and it don't seem like there's any way, he'll send a raven with some food in his mouth to make a way for his people. David said, I've never seen the righteous for He said, I was young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. He's always provided. He'll provide for you today. Yes, sir. He'll provide for you today. Yes. Not when they were hollering about Y2K. Y'all remember that, don't you? Yeah. Everybody's scared to death. And maybe it was God's mercy that allowed it not to happen. Right. And I ain't saying I wanted it to happen. I didn't want it to happen. I didn't want everything to shut down and all this chaos to start. A lot of people would have committed suicide. Right. I didn't want it to happen. Oh, but I knew inside of me that if it did happen, God's going to move. God He's going to make a way. Yes. Somehow or another, we might have to go up in the hills and live by a brook. And wait for the birds to bring us something to eat. But God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has never let one of His children starve to death. He ain't going to let you. Amen? Hallelujah. So He's the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And all, the same God that healed blind Bartimaeus still heals today. The same God that healed the woman with the issue of blood still heals today. The same God that raised Lazarus from the dead still is able to raise the dead today. And all of that will preach. Yes, sir. Have I proved that point this morning? Amen. All of that will preach. Right. But that ain't exactly what I want to talk about this morning. Come on. I mentioned it last Sunday. But I realized he's more than able to do all of that, and he's still doing that. He's still healing. Right. He's still delivering. Yes. He's still setting free. Yes, <clears throat> but the way God revealed it to me in a new and a fresh way was the same grace that I had for you yesterday I have for you today. Amen. The same grace. Wouldn't it be pitiful if you thought God was going to run out of mercy yeah. on you? Yes, sir. Amen. See, God's mercy, His grace, His forgiveness, His love, yeah. all of that doesn't change either. That's right. The same love He had for you as He lay there on that rugged piece of wood as they drove those nails in His hands and feet. He still loves you that way today. Yes, sir. See, people's love changes. Amen. Somebody might come to tell you and they might tell you they don't love you no more. Yeah. You may have stood before the preacher and you might have said, till death do us part. Yeah. And that lasted for one of you for about six months. Yeah. And now you don't love each other no more. Come on. So what man calls love might change. But right. God's love don't change. That's right. His grace doesn't change. Amen. Amen. The same grace that I found in Him yesterday, I can find in Him today. Right. The same grace. And it gives me comfort to know that there will be grace for tomorrow. Because I know Brother Billy's going to have to have grace Amen. tomorrow. Amen. Amen. It gives me comfort today, Brother Sleece, to know that there was forgiveness for me when I fell down at an old-fashioned altar. It gives me comfort today to know that I can go to Him today and ask for forgiveness. Oh, and it gives me comfort to know that tomorrow when I mess up, and believe me, I will mess up. Amen. It gives me comfort to know that that same forgiveness is there for me today. That is mercy is new every morning. That His mercy endures forever. That His grace will never fail as long as I turn to Him. His arms are open. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
Oh, my, my, my. And you might say, well, yeah, now that's great now that we're under the... You know, we have a way of splitting the Bible in two there. We've got the Old Testament, the New Testament, and we talk about the dispensation of law and the dispensation of grace. Amen. Right. And most of the time when you talk about grace, people are talking about the New Testament, but you can find you can find grace all the way back in the book of Genesis. Amen. Right. Genesis, the sixth chapter. The Bible says that God looked down on the earth and the wickedness of man was it was horrif it was horrifying. Right. It says that man's wickedness was great. Right. And that every imagination of the thoughts of the heart, of his heart, was on evil continually. Listen to what kind of bad shape man was in then, compared to the way man's shape man's in today. And it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth. Yeah. It grieved his heart. Can you imagine today? His own creation that he created in his image. Amen. Grieving the very heart of God. Right. Because they had turned away from him into wickedness. Amen. And what's the Lord say? Genesis 6 and 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy man right. whom I have created from the face of the earth. Both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. Oh, thank God for verse 8. If it wasn't for verse 8, we wouldn't be here today. Amen. Exactly. He'd have wiped it all out. Absolutely. I don't know if he'd have started over again or not. <clears throat> but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. You think you can't make a difference today just because you're one person? You think today that you can't make your church can't make a difference just because all oh, you got 10, 15, maybe 3? Oh, you can make a difference today. Amen? The only thing to hold back God's judgment hand on your city that you live in may be because you found... Oh, hallelujah! Maybe because you found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen? God looks down and on all of mankind. He can find one that found grace in His sight. And because of that, He spares what in essence is the world. Because had He not saved a man, there would have been no one to carry on the reproduction process and, and cause the earth to be replenished once more. Right. Amen? One man. Maybe God looked down on the evilness of Owensboro, Kentucky today. Come on. And thought, well... That earthquake they've been hollering about so many years? Yeah. Maybe it's just right about to happen. Right. But then he sees a little man over there. What street do you live on, Brother David? Jackson. Jackson. Over on Jackson, he sees a little man over there with about a dozen cats. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Ten now. <laughs> and he hears him playing the guitar and singing praises to the Lord. And he hears him praying and lifting up the name of Jesus. Yeah. And he says, oh, I ain't going to destroy him because David Fentress has found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Maybe you don't think you can make a difference today. I got news for you. One man made all the difference in the world. And God's the same today. One man, one woman, one prayer warrior can make all of the difference in the world. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Make all the difference. Come on. Right. Maybe the business where you're working is in trouble. Right. And the people running it are not godly people. Come on. Do you know God can bless that place because you're there? Right. right. Yeah. Read the story of Joseph. True. Yeah. Amen. True. The places he went to, those people weren't godly. Exactly. But God blessed because he was there. Yeah, absolutely. Because he had favor. Yeah. Yes, in the sight of God. Amen. Come on, yeah. Amen. Yeah. You can make a difference. Yes, sir. Right where you're at. Right. Because God's grace is the same. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's still, it was the same yesterday, right. today, and forever. Yeah. And because I know this morning mm -hmm. that He has no that He has no respect to person. Yeah. And because I know this morning that God is not a man that He should lie. Right. And because I know this morning that in Him there is neither shadow nor turning. Amen. Oh. Because I know this morning He is God exactly. and He changes not. Because I know this morning the promise that He dropped in my heart a couple of weeks ago. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Then I know that that same grace that I found when I needed it yesterday that I can find it today. Not only that, but I'll be able to find it tomorrow when I need it. Amen. His grace. God. His grace. Because I know that He holds the future. Amen. Yeah. And I know He holds my hand. Exactly. Because I know that His grace 
was sufficient for the Apostle Paul. I know His grace is sufficient for me today. Amen. Amen. The book of Psalms says, My heart is indicting a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made touching the King. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Do you know your tongue writes books? Yeah. Volumes. Volumes, yeah. Amen. Right. And not like if I wrote a book today, you know, and it was terrible and it was awful. Yeah. You could take it out and burn it and that was it. Right. You can't burn these books that your tongue's writing. That's right, brother. Amen. Exactly. Your words carry on. Forever. Their impact, amen. You can't get a Brillo pad won't take it off. That's right. Amen. Amen. Be careful, little tongue, what you say. Amen. He also says. Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips. Therefore God hath blessed thee forever. Isn't that beautiful? Psalms 84 and 11 says, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will He withhold from them that walk uprightly. Amen? O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. Yeah. Ephesians 2 and 8 says, For grace, for by grace are you saved. Through faith and not of yourselves, it is not. It is a gift of God. It is not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. The same grace that saved me is the same grace that keeps me today. I know it's old-fashioned, but it's the truth anyway. Amen. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. First, uh, 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, you'll find where Paul prayed three times to get rid of the thorn, the buffeting spirit that was sent. His answer came from the Lord. Yeah. Not the answer maybe that he wanted at first. Amen. But he oh. certainly was content with it right. when God spoke to him and said, My grace is sufficient for thee. Amen. My grace is sufficient for thee. And not only His grace this morning, but His mercy. His mercy is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The book of Psalms, as a matter of fact, over and over says the mer that His mercy endureth forever. Amen. Over and over. Read, read Psalms, the 108th chapter. His mercy endureth forever. His mercy endureth forever. See, God has to... I know sometimes you get tired because Brother Billy, well, he's been kind of preaching on the same thing. Well, God repeats Himself. Give me a little latitude. Let me repeat myself too. Amen. Maybe you need to just maybe. I don't want to offend you today. I know that you're like Einstein. and you Listen, I, I was watching TV the other night. And there was a preacher on there, I can't remember his name, it's not important because I don't know if I'd share it with you if I knew it. But he said, you can't tell me nothing about the Bible. I know it all. And he wasn't joking. Oh. He wasn't joking either. Amen? So maybe you're like that this morning. Maybe you're part of his school of theology. But just maybe, maybe there's a little bit of a chance that you may need to hear something again. Oh, wow. Amen? Maybe you didn't get it the first time. Amen? Right, right. Maybe you didn't get it the second time. Amen. Maybe you didn't get it the third time. I don't know about you, but I'm hard-headed sometimes. Amen? Yeah. Sometimes it takes a while for me to get it. I'm told and I'm told and I'm reading and I'm reading and finally I'm like, huh, now I get it. Yeah. Amen? True. So God repeats Himself over and over, exactly. saying, My mercy endures forever. 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 Why? Because He wants us to know that His mercy endures forever. He wants you to know today that if you're out there and if there's breath in your body, His mercy is still available for you. Amen. Amen. I worked with some boys and there was an old guy there and they think the boys came through these apostolic brethren, not that that matters. But they came to me and they said, don't you be hanging around Him. I said, well, why not? He said, because we, we're going to pray judgment down on him. He's a reprobate. God's done gave up on him. We're going to pray judgment down. And if judgment falls, it might fall on you too. I looked at him, shook my head. As long as there's breath in that man's body, he still has a chance with God. Amen. As long, somebody do me a favor this morning. Breathe in real deep. Now let it back out. Now you know there's still a chance for you today. All right. I know your family might have told you there's no more hope for uh, you. I know that your friends might have walked away and said there's no more hope for you. Right. I know that the enemy 
has told you there's no more hope for you. Right. But I got news for you. As long as there's breath in your body, there's still grace, there's still mercy, right. there's still forgiveness to be found in God. If you will turn to Him today, He will welcome you with open arms. Amen. So His mercy endures forever. Exactly. How about His love? The Bible says in Jeremiah 31 and 3, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. John 3.16, which we should never get tired of hearing, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Never let the enemy convince you that God don't love you. Amen. He loves you as much today as He's ever loved you. Right. Amen. Right. He loves you with an everlasting love, Brother yes. Sweet. Amen. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. forever. His love is the same yesterday, right. today, and forever. His grace is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His mercy is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His forgiveness is the same yesterday, today, and forever. My, 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 the Bible teaches us and, and, and admonishes us to turn to Him and to ask Ask Him to forgive us, to repent, amen, to forgive us of our sin, turn from our wicked ways. And I know that He would do that yesterday. And we can stand here today and say, well, God has closed His door. No, He hasn't. As long as man, hallelujah, turns to Him with a repentant heart, the door of mercy is open. If you turn to Him today, you will find a forgiving God, yes, a loving God, exactly. a merciful God. Amen. Amen. The same God that forgave you of your sins the first time will forgive you the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth. Which you have to ask Him. You have to ask Him. Amen. When Peter came to Him in his boastful pride, said, Lord, how many times i got to forgive this Yahoo? Seven times seventy? He thought that was a pretty good number. Amen. Seven times seventy? And Jesus said, Jesus, seven times, amen. And Jesus said, no, not seven times. Seven times 70. Amen. Seven times 70. That's 490. But he wasn't really, he wasn't really narrowing it down to a certain number. That's right. He just went over and over and over and over. Because see, they had this thing, this perfect number of seven in the in the Jewish ways of you know their their way of thinking that once you got it seven times you don't get it no more amen yeah. should i forgive him seven times no seven times 70 amen god's mercy endures forever amen he forgives you today just like he forgave you yesterday yes amen Thank now i'm not talking about playing with the grace of god huh. and just you know living loose and saying well god forgives me Heard one man say, well, I asked for forgiveness when I was saved and God forgave me then of all the sins I had did. He forgave me of all the sins I'm ever going to do so I don't have to ask for forgiveness no more. Right. Talking about airheads. Yeah. Amen. That ain't what the Bible teaches. Amen. Oh. The Bible teaches us that if we will confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. We spent a whole month on that. Amen. Come on. First John 1 if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, or the truth is not in us. Right. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, trust me here when I say John was saved. Amen? He says, if we say we have no sin, right. we deceive ourselves. He's talking about, talking about sinless perfection in this life. Ain't going to happen. Right. You might, if you sit here today and think, I've got to be perfect. Or I ain't going to go to heaven. Well, see you later. You ain't going. You ain't going. You're not going to go. Amen. You're not going to go. The only way you can get perfection today is the blood of Jesus. The only way you can get justification today is the blood of Jesus. Amen. The only way you can be perfect today is to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. The only perfection that you're ever going to achieve is spiritual maturity. Amen. Amen. And asking for forgiveness 
and repenting and going on and then deciding that I know I'm going to mess up but when I do, I have an advocate with the Father. Is that not what the Bible teaches us? Amen. It teaches us that we have an advocate with the Father. Amen. When we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. We have someone to turn to. We have the blood to go to today. You're going to mess up. And if you think the only way you're going to make it to heaven is if you never mess up again, you ain't going to go. That's what the blood is for. For us to say, Lord, forgive me. I messed up. Please, Lord, forgive me. There ain't but one person ever been perfect that walked this earth and it ain't you. Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ, the righteous. There is forgiveness today because His forgiveness is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm closing. The Bible says in... James 1 and 17, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. I tried to quote that a while ago. I got a little wrong, but you got yeah. meat of it anyway. There is no sh neither shadow of turning in Him. Malachi 3 and 6, He says, For I am the Lord. I change not. Amen? Isn't that good to know this morning? Yes. Yeah. Listen to these. This is a promise you can sink your teeth into today. Amen? I can come to you and give you a tip on the stock market. Tell you, this is a sure thing. Yeah. You can put all your money into it. And then next week it might all... Pfft, you done lost everything you had. Well, I can come to you and tell you there's a race going on over to the... Whatever that place is in Avenue. Over there where they do the race, racing with the horses. Yeah. Ellis, Ellis Park. It's a sure thing. Yep. So you run home, you sell everything you got, you pawn everything you got, take all the cash you got, mm. run over to Ellis Park and put your money down on that sure thing. Yeah. When they announced the races, they said, well, he won't be racing today, he pulled a muscle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Either that or he gets in the race and he gets hurt in the middle of the race. Broke leg. Breaks his leg. <laughs> you sure thing that had to be shot. Mm -hmm. oh. Amen. You can't, there ain't, a, there ain't but one sure thing today, and that's Jesus. That's it, brother. Amen. Say it. That's Jesus. Say it. Hallelujah. Quit blowing all your money on the lottery. Quit blowing all your money on your poker games. Quit blowing all your money on the racetrack. Put it in something sure today. Amen. Put it somewhere where you know you're going to get a return. Amen. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. I can tell you a place to invest your money today in the kingdom and the work of God. Amen. I can tell you a place today to invest your time in the kingdom and the work of God. I can tell you today a place to invest your hope. And that's yeah. Jesus because He never changes. Come on. He's the same yesterday, today, Come on, and forever. His grace will be there for you tomorrow. Yes. It's there for, it was there for you yesterday. Wrong. How many people have ever been forgiven? Wrong. You messed up. His grace, the word sufficient means it's enough. That's right. It's enough. Amen. Don't need nothing else. It's enough. It doesn't need anything added to it. See, he don't need your grace. He don't need his grace plus your works for forgiveness. That's how the Catholic Church intertwines all that together. You can go and you'll get grace if you do penance. Amen. If you do penance, if you go and you count your beads, you can get forgiveness today if you'll say Hail Mary 150 times. If you'll count your beads, if you'll go out and feed the poor and take care of the sick, you can get forgiveness. None of that will get you forgiveness. None of that. Those are good things to do. Not the Hail Marys and the counting of the beads. If you got beads, throw them in the trash. Amen. Hail Mary. She ain't the mother of God. Amen. She ain't. She was the mother of the earthly Jesus. Amen. Yeah. The man. Amen. The, the the fleshly part. But that's it. She was not sinless. He was God in the flesh. Not one time does the Bible ever call her deity. But anyway, that's another subject altogether. <laughs> Counting your beads and doing all that won't do it. Not by works. It's not by works, lest any man should boast. It's by the grace of God. of God. And if you've gotten forgiveness yesterday, trust me, you can get forgiveness today. Right. Say, but I've messed up too many times. Oh, no, you haven't. The fact that you feel that way lets me know that you have a heart at least that wants forgiveness. Amen? Right. You're not playing around with God. So many people today will lay on their deathbed and say, well, I can't ask God. I'm ashamed to ask God. I messed up so many times. I did so many bad things. Now's the time to ask Him. Amen? Right. As long as there's breath in your body, you can turn to Him with a repentant heart and say, God, forgive me. I know I've sinned. I know I've messed up a thousand times already. But please forgive me, Lord. Wash me and cleanse me. He'll do it. He'll do it. He'll forgive you all over again. Amen. The same mercy 
that you found in Him yesterday, you will find today. The same grace that you found in Him yesterday, you will find tomorrow. The same forgiveness that you found in Him. I've heard I've, people come to the altar and they get down and they cry and they repent and they go out and people sit in the pew and they say, well, we'll see how long this lasts. We'll see. They've been in here before. Won't you just shut up? Amen. And let them, let them, let them get forgiveness. Let them ask God. You don't want to be at the altar repenting. Amen. Long tongue. Sitting there talking about how many times they've been to the altar. How ungodly they are. You make me sick. Amen. Can I say that today? People make me sick that sit around talking about how ungodly somebody else is. Well, you're looking in the mirror. Amen. Because the Bible says the tongue is a little ember, but it's set on fire of hell. Amen. All right. Oh, I could preach this morning on the tongue. Amen. Amen. Oh, okay, brother, I can't, brother. Stop. Okay. <laughs> we will sooner or later. His forgiveness is there for you. Amen. His mercy is there for you. Right. His grace is there for you. It's sufficient. Dear Amen. You know what His grace is, don't you? It's the unmerited love and favor of God. You can't earn His grace. Amen. You can't earn His forgiveness. You just ask Him. It's a gift. Amen. His forgiveness is a gift. Everything we get from Him is a gift because we can't buy it. Right. We don't have anything worth trading. Amen. When you was a kid, you know, and one kid had some marbles and you had something and you wanted to trade him, you know? Yeah. I'll trade you this for that over here. I'll trade you this baseball card for that. Or I'll trade you this marble for that one. Mm -hmm. You ain't got nothing that's worth trading right. to Him. Mm -hmm. Other than what He wants. And that's you. Right. That's you. Amen. Yeah. Oh, I traded for riches. The rags of my soul. Amen. Oh, <laughs> I gave him the pieces yeah. and he made me whole. Amen. I brought to him nothing yeah. and he gave me everything. Exactly. Oh, he found a beggar, but I found Absolutely. a king. Amen. That's all you got. That's all he wants. He just wants you. Right. Amen. He just Come wants on. you. Come on. His grace, his mercy, forgiveness, and love, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Somebody else had something this morning.